All right, let's start out part two with a problem solving challenge. So for a thousand points, calculate the eccentricity of an elliptical orbit where the semi-minor axis is half the semi-major axis. So um, remember the problem solving strategy P wiki. Draw a picture in your engineering notebook, write down what you know, and then write down the equation and see if you can use that to help you out. So please pause it right now and at least get as far as drawing the picture and writing down what you know. And then um, I'll give you one other option to pause it so you can try to finish this one on your own. It's excellent practice, so pause it now. Hopefully you have a picture, let me click through to get my information here, a picture like this. Um, your semi-major axis is just A, semi-minor axis is B, uh, but then, and you may have called this here 2B, since the semi-major is twice the semi-minor. Um, and what was written here is semi-minor is half semi-major. So what I wrote was B equals half of A. But I like it better. My brain makes it easier for me if I say that 2B equals A. So this is what I know. And I know the equation is square root of 1 minus B squared over A squared. So if this is as far as you got and you didn't actually get an answer here, then um, I'm going to give you one more chance to pause it. But let me give you one more tip here you now know what A equals. So we can exchange A right here for something else. You know that A equals 2B, so you don't need to put an A here anymore. You can put a 2B, and that's going to allow you to, once you square it, to cancel the Bs out completely. And then all you're going to be left with is numbers, and that should help you get your answer. So give that a try, and pause it again if you need to, and then um, continue with the answer. So let me walk you through this. Oh, this didn't quite show up on the screen the way I wanted it to, but um, it's E, eccentricity is the square root of 1 minus B squared divided by 2B squared, because I've replaced A with 2B. That's really all I'm doing. And now if I square 2B, I get square root of 1 minus B squared over 4B squared, because 2B squared, you square both of those, so you get 2 squared and you get B squared, you end up with 4B squared. Well, from there, I can say that b squared divided by 4b squared, the b squareds will cancel out. So I just end up with 1 over 4, which is why right here I have 1 square root of 1 minus 1 over 4. Well, 1 minus 1 over 4 is 3 fourths, and I know the square root of 3 fourths, at least my calculator knows, is 0.866. So that is the eccentricity of an elliptic orbit where semi-minor is half a semi-major, 0.866. All right, I hope you gave that a shot. We are looking right now at um, all these orbits have the same semi-major axes, but their eccentricities and their orientations around the Earth are different. So um, just kind of take a look at this, observe the, uh, observe the orbital periods. Um, you can see that the, the green one has, again, same, all have the same semi-major axes. Um, but their eccentricities are different. If one part is the same, that doesn't mean that this, the orbit is all the same. It, by changing other factors, um, you can completely change the way the orbits look. If you were going to describe the orientation of the orbit in space, a lot of them have identical sizes and shapes, um, but they can vary in their orientation in space. So if you look at these um, different satellites, they're, they're kind of um, traveling around the Earth in different orientations. And the three additional Keplerian elements define this orientation. So these are the three additional Keplerian elements. You have inclination, right ascension of the ascending node, and argument perigee. And I'm going to go into detail on each one of these so you have an understanding of what they are. So let's start with inclination. Inclination is um, probably one of the easier ones to understand. It's just the angle between the Earth's equator and the plane of orbit. So it describes the tilt of the orbit. So the yellow one is a five degree tilt. It's almost straight with the equator. And then the orange one is 75 degrees. It's almost 90 degrees, which would be what you'll learn later is a polar orbit. Uh, which satellite will complete one orbit first? Well, they all would complete it at the same time. It doesn't really matter the inclination. That does not change the period because the only thing that affects the period is semi-major axes, if you remember from that equation. So a little more on inclination. Inclination determines the northern and southern latitude limits over which the satellite orbits. For example, a satellite with an inclination of 45 degrees will have a ground trace ranging from 45 degrees north to 45 degrees south. Yay, that's pretty nice and convenient. So you see our purple inclination um, right here 
has a inclination of 45 degrees. And the orange one, which goes way up here, it's like an 85 degree angle or 75 degree angle maybe goes up to here. So whatever the angle of inclination is, that also shows you the maximum and minimum range for the ground trace. So you're gonna learn more about ground traces a little bit later, but you can see if it's mostly equatorial, then you get um, a very saturated view of the equator, but that's all you get. And if it's really high inclination, you miss a lot of gaps, but you get to see, um, you miss a lot of area, but you get to see a lot um, farther north and south. But then there's just a larger space in between the orbits. All right, so let's look one other time at inclination. An orbit with an inclination of zero degrees is called an equatorial orbit. And one with an inclination of 90 degrees is called a polar orbit. Both of these are really important to note down because they're very common um, type situations. So an inclination for equatorial orbit would look something like this, where it's basically just passing through here and that's all that it's seeing. Um, and probably not entirely useful to have an equatorial orbit unless you're looking at something specific with weather and the equator. A polar orbit passes over the entire Earth because as you have your orbit, if it's like this, the satellite is orbiting, and this can be my little satellite here. The satellite is orbiting, and as it's orbiting, the Earth is spinning, so it constantly is changing its location. This is just a brilliant model, I know. Um, anyway, I'm sure that made it very clear, but you're constantly getting these vertical ground traces, and over the course of a day, um, and a, remember, a low Earth orbit is about 90 minutes, so over the course of a day, you're going to get um, a ground trace that easily covers the entire Earth like this, because the Earth is spinning underneath it in one day. So you're going to get a ground trace that covers the entire Earth. What do ground traces reveal? Well, um, based on what we have already learned about orbital parameters, we can determine both the inclination and the period from a ground trace. So the inclination is a little bit easier. You just look at how high am I here. This is about halfway between 30 and 60, so 45 degree inclination. That one I can tell pretty clearly. Um, but orbital period can also be determined using a simple calculation. So in the first pass, we were at first pass, we were at zero degrees longitude, and then remember the Earth is rotating around this, um, and so. By the time that we get back to our original starting spot, um, now the Earth has moved underneath us, so now we are here. So then we have to measure this distance. So let's look at how to do that. So remember, the Earth rotates underneath it. The westward regression of the ground trace is due to the rotation of the Earth. That's why it looks like the satellite is moving west, but in fact, the Earth is rotating eastward. So we determine how many minutes it takes for the Earth to rotate one degree. Well, how many minutes are in a day? So we have to do that for that calculation first. If there's 60 minutes in an hour and there is 24 hours in a day, 60 times 24 is 1,440. But in fact, there are 23 hours and 56 minutes um, in a day um, in one rotation. And that's why over the period of a year, we add or a, a number of years, we add four years, actually, we add that leap year day in there. Um, so that kind of averages out. But really, it's only 23 hours and um, 56 minutes. So we want to be as exact as we can because we're dealing with satellites. So I'm going to say 1436 instead of 1440. And there are 360 degrees in one rotation of the Earth. So this tells you how many minutes pass by every degree in the Earth. So as the Earth rotates one degree, then we, it takes four minutes to do that, 3.99 minutes. So now we have to de determine how many degrees pass the satellite's orbit um, on consecutive orbits, or how much it regresses on consecutive orbits. So we'll use 25 degrees as an example. And I'm going to flip back really quick. What that means is you're looking at from here, 0, to here is 30. So if we say here to here is 25, then it has moved 25 degrees in one pass, in one orbital period. 25 degrees in one period. How many minutes per degree? Well, again, based off our calculations, it's 3.99 minutes per degree times 25 degrees. So that'll tell you how long it takes the Earth to rotate this mini. That is the period of the satellite. So 25 degrees at 3.99 minutes per degree means that the orbit was 99 minutes and 43 seconds to get all the way around because that's how long it took the Earth 
to move that distance. So you're going to do a problem that's almost identical to this, uh, where you need to calculate number of minutes per degree, which is not going to change. It's always going to be 3.99 minutes per degree, because that's how many minutes it takes. Um, and then you just have to figure out the distance between these periods. Now, if you have a complete ground trace like this, then you're looking from this distance here to this one over here. And so we have to figure those out. So it's sometimes you have to find spots where it's easy to actually measure. Like here's an intersection point, and that one is not an intersection point, but that is sort of our approximate 25 degrees. And that's actually the one that they use with this particular satellite. So let's move forward. If your ground trace reaches 64 north latitude and returns to the equator 36.6 degrees to the west of the original location, determine the angle of inclination and period. So it's Identical to what we just did. Now it is your tizern. So pause this and write this out and calculate this and then check your answer. Pause. So we would find out that the angle of inclination is just 64 degrees inclination because it reaches 64 north. The period is 36.6 .6 degrees times 3.99 minutes per degree gives you a value of 146 0.034 minutes. That was the end of part two. Dog, 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 dog.